Welcome to Solutions with Courtney Anderson. I am Courtney Anderson, your host for the show. Our topic today is part of our Myth Warriors series. Our Myth Warriors series is where we are warriors. We are we are in battle. We are fighting against all the myths, lies, misconceptions, tricks, fallacies that are out there in life that are trying to become obstacles in our path to exceeding and surpassing our goals. So that's what we're doing. We are we are war. We are at war. We are warriors against myths. And what we're trying to do is examine some of the concepts, ideas, sometimes even beliefs that we have and and try to determine are these credible? Is that something that's accurate? Is that something I really should adhere to? Is it something that's that's reflected in 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 some version of of truth? Uh, in the world, or is this something that really isn't accurate and that I've just sort of absorbed or, or heard or latched onto, and it's really a negative. It's a negative thing for me to believe, and, the, and it hurts my ability to achieve my goals. And if that's the situation, then we need to we need to do a reassessment. Is it time for us to change the way that we approach, value, and accept this specific concept, or as we call them, targets? So we're myth warriors in this series, and we have targets that we're trying to trying to address. We have a, where we've we've sort of laser focused all of our energy on that target. Is that a myth or is that accurate? Is that something that's going to help me be uh, the person that I believe that I am and can be and will be? Is that going to help me find some joy and contentment in my life, or is that something that really is 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 really set as a trap to to sabotage me? And if so, what can I do about that? So our target, our focus for this specific episode in the series is women who succeed professionally fail in personal relationships. Women who succeed professionally fail in personal relationships. And it's interesting, this this show topic, um, it first sort of was added to the lineup somewhere around Valentine's Day. So I'm not really sure, you know, what I was thinking is, is, is I was kind of going through all the different show suggestions. And, of course, the show suggestions come from um, people in the community. So people email me questions. People ask me questions when I'm giving a, a speaking engagement or an event. Um, they also come from discussions I've had with, you know, my internal uh, staff and team members over the years that I've been providing uh, corporate education, corporate training experiences, um, and motivational uh, keynotes. And so – there's a long laundry list of things to sort of get to, and as we sort of launched and, and are continuing to, to move forward with uh, launching, you know, this in a in a in an audio program daily, and and on integrating um, the ex- existing television or, uh, or video programs we have, and then adding a new shooting schedule for those. There's a lot of content, and the really exciting thing for me is so much of this has been. Uh, these are all things that for you know. What is you know for for fourteen years, fourteen years or more, these are things that I've been thinking about, things that have that I've wanted to do shows on that that we just didn't have the the you know the, the time and the resources, and so as I've I've sort of re-engineered a lot of my um, professional services and businesses, this is something that I think is incredibly important, so that it's not just something that. Um, some individual person who I'm, I'm either working with coaching or mentoring or someone that I've I'm provided educational or corporate training services for, um, they get the, 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 the feedback. But also, you know, we can share it with the world and, you know, potentially help other people and, and, for, and, and um, continue, of course, to gain more insight into what, what topics are important to other people. So as I said, it was triggered again as, as looking at the show lineup somewhere around the Valentine's Day holiday. And I've just heard this this statement, you know, or this sentiment so many times, right? That the idea is that, that women, um, and really only women, I think. I've never heard that men who succeed professionally fail in personal relationships. I actually haven't heard that as a as a belief or a sentiment. Um, I have heard that people who 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 are unhealthy about work, maybe people who are what they call workaholics, people who just you know put work above everything else. I've heard that workaholics, people who are abusive and unhealthy with work, um, can fail at personal relationships for men and women, and that makes you know sense. It shouldn't be it's not gender specific. It seems that if you 
if you're unhealthy about something to the point that you're abusive uh, to yourself and your time and you just all you do is work, then obviously anybody in your personal life is not going to feel valued because you're not going to give them any time and attention. So that is something that's not gender specific. But I've this idea, though, that if a woman prioritizes professional goals and activities and endeavors, then in some sort of way, the payoff for that, like the consequence, I guess, is that you're going to fail in your personal relationships. And most typically, what I hear is that people say that you'll fail in your sort of romantic relationships. But you also hear the, the idea that women fail as, as, as parents, uh, that you're just unable, again, in these personal relationships. You fail as a friend. Uh, maybe even you fail as an adult daughter. Uh, you know, that there's this huge burden it, that if you decide that you're going to go ahead and, and make your professional endeavors a goal, and then if you can do that, but you have to understand that the price you're going to pay for that is this failure, just catastrophic failure in these personal relationships, whether it's romantic, um, as a parent, as an adult child, as a sibling, as a friend, you're just going to be a huge catastrophic failure because you went and you did all these things to succeed professionally. And, and there's a lot of uh, mass media discussion about this. It seems like it, it pops up every pretty frequently. There's a Recently there was the, the lean in. A product that was sort of put out there. The idea is that you, you know, big executive in high tech, you know, basically saying, you know, you women need to be more assertive and, and sort of lean in, and then and sort of in a way addressing the sort of bigger issue, you know, this this idea, you know, can you have it all, quote unquote, can you have it all? And again, I usually hear this to be a gender specific question. I don't often hear the, you know, men saying, can you have it all? I typically. Um, do hear, again, that people who are abusive about work, workaholics, then they sacrifice and their, their marriages and relationships and their, you know, children's time and all, and they do have really horrible outcomes, which is why it's, it's an abusive, unhealthy thing to be a workaholic. Um, but I don't usually hear that men um, who, who succeed professionally are, are going to have to then sacrifice having, you know, a, a, a healthy uh, romantic life, a healthy family. I don't usually hear that. And I don't usually hear men say, I can't have it all, that I can either work or I can have a healthy um, personal life, but I can't quote, have it all. I can't have all of this. And I've, I've actually not read a lot about that or seen a lot of dialogue about that. Um, now, it might be that that I'm just missing it, <laughs> and that and that this actually is an argument that, that everybody faces, that, that men and women think, oh, I can't succeed professionally and have a personal life, I have to pick one, that might be something that, that's more pervasive than I'm just aware of. But typically I do hear mostly it's, you know, directed at women, that you, you have to realize you, quote, can't have it all, you cannot have it all, that you cannot have professional uh, feelings of success or, or measurements of success and have personal relationships that are successful, that you have to kind of pick one, you know, and then you can succeed in one. I guess, the, you know, the, the corollary is true, too. I guess if you decide that you're going to succeed in your personal relationships, then obviously you you accept that you'll be a failure if you have a, sort of any kind of professional endeavor. Um, you don't hear it that much, though. You don't hear the, the, the analysis kind of that, that, that way where you're t talking about, hey, I'm going to be a big, huge success in my professional, in my personal life, and then I'm going to have to, you know, consequently be a big, huge failure um, in my in my work. I don't usually hear it that way. I usually hear this idea that you cannot, women cannot have it all, and that it all is defined as, you know, sort of a holistic approach to life, that you have things you do professionally, and then you have things that you do personally, and that you can't do all of these things. Like, you can only do, you know, part of these things. So let's explore. The first part of, of whether or not this is a myth, I would argue, is related to the, the analysis I just put forward. If it's, if it's valid that as humans there's only so many hours in a day, which is true, and that we have you know, all these horrible constraints due to sleep and um, we have to eat, uh, you know, we have to use the restroom, uh, we have some sort of grooming process. You know, this stuff takes time, and that's, you know, I can't really get that time back. If it was a universal that anyone who wants to succeed professionally must also accept then that they will have to fail in their personal relationships, and I think it would be something worth exploring um, in depth, and I also think it would show that there's some credibility to it. 
the challenge I think that tends to make me feel that this is more of a myth, more of a of a lie than it is an accurate truth, is why would it be gender specific? Why would only a woman have to look at look at her life and, and say, I can't have it quote all. I can't do personal and professional activities. I have to do one or the other. What would make a woman, you know, be subject to this limitation but not a man? I mean it doesn't it doesn't seem on the face of it to be valid. Now some would argue, well, that women are responsible for uh, more personal uh, activities in terms of their time and in terms of if a woman uh, gives birth to a child, well, that's an in, that's an incredible you know time investment and and there you know sort of biological consequences to that 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 may impact the person's ability to work. Um, I think that all I believe in I do believe and I say it in all the programs you know that all people are valid and all of our, our feelings are valid and that we're equally valid and valuable and I do believe that thus I would argue that all all personal relationships are valid so if someone gives birth to a child that's valid if a person adopts a child that's equally valid if a person uh, doesn't um, give birth or adopt a child and doesn't have any human children I would argue that's valid if a person has other personal relationships that are important to them, and whether it's a friendship or or a, you know with animals or other um, caregiving that they provide, I would argue that's valid. If someone is legally married, I would argue that's a valid relationship. If someone is what they call common law married, which in some states in the United States actually is also a legal marriage, it's valid. If someone is intentionally chooses not to be legally married but is still in a relationship. Um, with another uh, person, I, that's valid. Um, I don't, I don't label any of these quote better or, or more realistic or worth more. So I, I can't uniformly you know, say all women are going to be in the same position in terms of how they define a personal relationship. Obviously, if someone is adopting a child, man or woman, or someone is giving birth to a child, that is a very uh, serious time for the child uh, and for the new parents to to bond. I mean, there's so much research on this. You know, so much goes right. So many things go right early in life that impact us for the rest of our lives. So I wholeheartedly support. Even in the U.S., they have a, a federal mandatory law in the U.S. that says certain categories of workers who've worked a certain amount of time and work for large companies are entitled to um, un, unpaid leave if they have a, if they're the birth of a child or for the adoption of a child or also for the illness of themselves or another family member. And I support that legislation. I think we could do, go a little bit further, uh, maybe extend it to, to, to all people, to, you know, irrespective of how many hours they work or how many how large their employer is. And I also think maybe at some level we could look at in the future if there if there's enough of a shared sacrifice in other areas of look at you know making that paid in 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 some form because having a child whether a biological child or an adopted child have time with their parents um there to bond there's so much research that just shows how powerful that is and so I do support that completely I don't think we should make a judgment that one is, quote, better or more important than the other. I, at the same time, feel that people who uh, choose to have a family and personal relationship, they don't um, bring in, in, in children into their family, are just as valid and valuable as anyone else. And I think that the argument that just categorically women, all women, every single woman, um, has to make this massive choice between you know professional success or professional failure and personal success or personal failure and you can't quote do both at any level I, I I would argue is categorically false if a man can do it at some level why couldn't a woman now can all men do it no I said earlier there's the, the stereotype and there's a sad a wonderful song Cat's Cradle right I think it's it in the 70s and it's a sad song about a father who spent all his time working and the lyrics are just gut wrenching. Every time I hear this song, I've heard it on you know who knows how many times in my life. And the father, 
you know, spent all his time working, you know, got to go, son, I got to go. And then at the end of the song, the, the, the son's grown up and he's an adult and his father's asking time, you know, for time with his adult son. And the adult son's like, nope, I got to go, I'm busy. And it's heartbreaking, right? Because the, the idea there is that, well, the you know, the father has to work and provide. You know, he's got to get out and make make things happen and make sacrifices so that there's, you know, food and, and, and shelter and the ability for the family to, to thrive. And I'm not negating you know, the the pressure that puts on people. And it's also just heart-wrenching. You know, that's one pop culture example, that, the lyrics to that song. But, you know, there's a theme throughout not just our modern culture, but culture in general, sort of, right, the distant father and what that does to people. Um, and, again, I, I think that as a society, we need to examine. Is, is that the... Is that the is that the the situation that we want to encourage where somebody feels like I just can't invest in my in my family, whether it's my child or my spouse or my parents or siblings or friends, because I just have to spend all of my awake and conscious time, you know, work, 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 work out of, you know, maybe maybe my perception of economic necessity. You know, that if I don't do this then no one is gonna be able to eat. And that's just a massive amount of pressure and stress to put on someone. I don't think it's fair to put that on a man or a woman. And I would argue that is the man, quote, having it all when when you have, and that's, you know, that's one pop culture song, but it's, you know, several decades old. So this isn't a new question. And again, it's not gender specific. You know, the bigger issues are, you know, which I think people are trying to address in some ways in our societies across the planet. You know, what do, what's important to us? What do we want people to spend their time doing? If we set it up where people feel like they have to go, you know, 80 hours a week and, you know, work, 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 then I don't think it's realistic for us to think that they're also going to be able to conjure up some magic time on a magic clock and also be, you know, spending quality time with their kids and quality time with their family members. I mean, it's just not possible. There's only so many hours in a day. So I actually do agree that if you're going to put yourself in a position where all of your time is spent on professional activities, then the reality is there just is no other time left for anything personal. Whether you're a man or a woman, whether you have, you know, children or spouses or neither or, you know, whatever it is in your personal life, you're not going to have one because you put all your time into work. I think the reality is that we have to make decisions collectively and, of course, individually. So man or woman, if you're going to be in a position where there's nothing left after, after your after your work in terms of time, then yeah. I, there's Not just your personal relationships fail, but everything else usually, right? Are you That means you're probably not spending time, you know, going to the gym or engaging in healthy activities or, you know, having any hobbies or anything else. Like everything falls apart, not just other people that you aren't able to invest time with, but yourself. So the question then, I guess, is what what do we do as individuals? succeeding professionally does not mean that you have to work 80 hours a week. Now, some are going to immediately say to me, well, that's not true. I'm in such and such field, banking. I'm in, you know, I'm an attorney at a, you know, high-pressure law firm. I'm a management consultant. I'm an engineer, you know, whatever. People start telling me all these examples where, yeah, everybody here works 80 hours a week. And I'm not disagreeing with you. They do. I've, I've done, you know, a lot of work with organizations where you go to the organization and they have all these seemingly awesome benefits, right? Like, oh, we have a great cafeteria. And look, there's a bunk bed room and everybody can take naps here. And it's like, yeah, because they don't want you to ever leave. You know what I mean? Like, if you eat here, shower here, sleep here, work here, you just work 24 hours a day, except for the time that you literally have to go to sleep because um, your body will break down and, you, you'll, you know, you'll, you'll become delirious. Um, and then they just keep you there. So those things do seem like they're nice, but the idea of not allowing somebody any personal life, even if it's just them by themselves, you know, relaxing in their place is, I believe, you know, borderline, it's totally unhealthy. I understand why organizations that have massive uh, pressure in terms of, you know, output feel like I'm going to get everything I can out of every single team member in terms of efficiency. And if somebody wants to sit here and work straight for four days, then okay. Um, I'm not putting all of this on the organization. I'm putting it on the individual. And I think part of the the reality that we all have to do, the calculus we all have to do, men or women, is what do you want out of life? That's the first question I ask so much, right? What do you want? I, well, I usually ask people, why are you here? So if I'm doing an on-site program, 
um, and then after that, I ask them why. And so my question would be, success doesn't mean that you have to work so many hours in that industry unless it's what you really want. If that makes you happy, then do it. Some people, that is what makes them happy. And some people say, look, I don't want anything else to do. I don't have anything else to do, and I don't want anything else to do. This is my total joy. And if I can, you know, work 18 hours a day, every single day, seven days a week, I'll do it. Okay, I'm not I'm not negating that. If that's your choice and that makes you happy, then you have fulfilled what you call personal and professional, and you should be, then feel like you have it all. It only seems to be when there's a conflict where somebody feels like they're having to make a choice and they're having to give something up. And my argument is that I think we need to be a little bit more realistic. I think this idea that men can just, you know, work incredible hours and they don't have any, you know, need for sleep and they don't have any need for, you know, intimacy in terms of relationships and people caring about them, I think it's been proven it's, you know, bunk. It's not true. Of course they do. And young men or boys need that and young women need that. And I think that we have to take more control in our lives about, again, what we consider success. I did a program a while ago on, um, you know, how do you define success or someone who says, I don't think I'll ever be successful. And it's all in your head. If you think you're successful literally right this moment, whatever you're doing in life, wherever you are in life, you are. I can't disagree with you. If you think you're not, all right. And then here's the weird thing. Even if you go out and you work 80 hours a week in some big fancy job, meaning that you have some sort of title that other people are impressed by or you work at some kind of company that people are impressed by or you make a massive amount of money, and we've done programs on this before, it's not going to make you any happier in and of itself. And, you know, if that was true, all rich people would be happy, right? And they're not. We know this. So what is success to you? And then my argument would be that you need to define it in a way for you that works for you. And I think part of the problem, though, is that we don't do what we want, right? We don't answer the question, why am I here? What do I want? But we get into this thing about what we think other people want, and we'll always lose that game. You cannot win these popularity contests. So if you're a woman, are you a failure if you're not married? No. Are you a failure if you've been married five times? No. Are you a failure if you're deliriously happy in a in a in a relationship right now? No. Are you a failure if you decided that you're gonna uh not work outside of your home right now? No. Are you a failure if you work, you know, eighty hours a week? No. It's all up to what works for you. So I think the only time that we that a woman is up against this argument of, oh, you can't have it all, you know. How how does she think she can do it all? There's just no way. Is when you're looking you're listening to what somebody else is trying to define you as. And that's on them. That's their own life. What makes you happy? And then go do that. Not that you can jump up today and just magically go out and do whatever you want in the world. Of course, there's requirements. There's the reality of a job and your your bills. There's the reality of, you know, what are your job skills. But my point is that you need to have a North Star. You need to have a mission statement and a, and a, and a value statement for you individually. What makes you feel that you're successful professionally? For me personally, I wouldn't be happy if I worked at uh, an organization and I felt that, I didn't have some autonomy on my time. And if that means I don't, you know, I, if, I, if I had to choose between the law office of Courtney Anderson and some, you know, really prestigious law firm, I'd choose almost always the law office of Courtney Anderson because I have more autonomy and more control over my time, over my workload, and over my income. But I understand, though, that when I go to social events or usually work-related lawyer events especially and you meet other lawyers and people, the first thing they always ask you is, oh, so who are you with? And what that means is what law firm do you work for? And I've been answering now for 16 years, I guess. I've been answering, you know, law office of Courtney Anderson. And that, of course, means nothing to anyone because it's not anything. It's not anything fancy or big or anything. It's just me. I started it by myself at, you know, what, 25, 26 years old, literally nothing. And so when I say that to people, usually then they kind of give this look like, oh, you know, like I'm not good enough because I don't, you know, work at a fancy place. And they're right. By their standards, I am not good enough. I have failed in their standards. But this, my life is not about other people's standards. My life is about my standards. By my standards, I've been a huge success. I was able to open that law firm, and I was able to make money, and I was able to buy my first house, and I was able to pay my little staff, and I was able to get into a bigger office, and I was able to keep it moving, and I've been able to keep it moving in all these different years in the way that I want to. And I'm happy. And that's success for me. So I defined it, and then that way I'm able to make time for what I want. 
I understand, though, that I'm a failure by other people, some other people's standards. They say, well, what on earth? Why on earth would anybody want to do some little tiny thing by themselves? I did, and I do, and I still want to, because I have different standards of what's important to me. I really don't care about entree to the right kind of social group or hanging out with the right kind of people because I you know, had the right kind of fancy place I worked. I mean, it's not important to me. It never has been. So thus, I didn't do that. If it was important to me, then I would have had to make different choices, right? Because I'd feel like a failure. But I just go by my North Star. And so personal relationships, you can absolutely succeed. And you can succeed in your professional goals based on the reality of what makes you happy and understanding the math of just how many hours we have in a day. You can't manufacture more time. So, of course, that's, that's, that's a silly argument to think, well, yeah, I can go work 80 hours a week and I can also spend you know, 40 extra hours a week on this family and all these wonderful relationships. You don't have enough time because everyone has to sleep. And you have to go to the bathroom and you have to eat. I mean, just basic stuff. You have to groom yourself. I mean, you just don't have the time. Nobody has it, though. You just got to allocate it better. And I don't think a man or a woman should end up in a situation like that old song where you you feel like you missed it. You missed your kid growing up, and they missed you, and now it's too late. And now you never got to know them. They're strangers. Why did that happen? Don't let that happen. Don't let somebody else define success. You define it. You know, and, and you have to be very, again, brutally honest. If it's really, really important to you that you have biological children and you're able, you know, to do so, um, then do it. Then be proud and just go out there and be happy. If it's important to you that you adopt uh, children, do it. If it's important to you do both, do it. If it's important to you that you do neither, do that. You define your success. It's your life. It's nobody's business, especially in your personal relationship. If it works for you in your personal relationship, it works. And I could do a whole series, and maybe at some point in the future we will, where people who are women who have, you know, completed some education or some work activities, and then they're they are not in a relationship and they want to be in one. And then they'll say, well, no one wants to be with somebody who, who's like me, that, that has accomplished things. I intimidate people, and I'll just have to be alone forever. Well, that's the silliest thing ever. It's just absolutely silly. You know, nobody is going to be attracted to everyone. That would ruin the whole, you know, species. But we're all attracted to somebody. And the most important person we should be attracted to is ourselves. And if you're honest with yourself and how, what you consider to be success, then more likely you're going to find somebody else honest with themselves and what they consider to be success, and it will work. If you are not honest with yourself, I think then, yeah, you're headed for disaster. So if somebody thinks that I'll be only, you know, I'll be really happy in my life if I have, you know, three children. It's just been my dream forever and it's really important to me. And then they go and they find somebody else that they want to be um, in a romantic relationship with and that person says, I don't want any children. Well, then they're going to be miserable. So that's not going to work. You don't want the same thing. Men, women, all of us are responsible for being truthful with ourselves what do I want what is success for me per personally what is success for me professionally we have different standards some people success is not you know I'm not successful unless I make you know whatever 10 million dollars a year some people say I'm not successful unless I work at a certain firm some people say I'm not successful unless you know XYZ whatever that's your personal choice I would ask you to re-examine that though and see why you think that you know is it because you really believe that or just because that's what everybody in your family told you or it's what other people told you or you think if you if you accomplish this thing then people will like you more and if so you're not really doing what you want you're just on this path to thinking you're going to try to please other people which almost always fails and your personal life again you should have complete and total pride and joy in who you are and you need to be very honest about what you consider to be a successful personal life and then go do that and if there are other people who who makes you feel bad about your personal choices, that's on them. I, <laughs> I I don't even know how many times people, you know, the same way that, that someone asks me what kind of law firm I'm with and I say, you know, my own, and then they sort of look at me like, oh, is the same way that, you know, I'll meet somebody at some event and they'll ask me, oh, you know, and are you married? And I'll say no, and they, oh. Or are you divorced? I'm like, no, oh. Oh, you know, did, did your husband pass away? No. Uh, oh, and they just get more and more sort of <laughs> cruel almost. I can be whatever I want to be, however I want to be, and it's nobody else's business. Part of me doesn't even understand these questions. I don't ever ask people stuff like this um, because it's none of my business, and I actually don't even think about it. It's not important to, to me to decide if I want to be your friend or 
hang out with you, you know, who you date or what you're doing in your personal life. But to other people, it seems to be like that's how they view themselves. And so then they try to make me feel bad about myself. I'm not going to feel bad about myself. And I don't think you should ever. So to conclude, it's a myth. We can all have, quote, it all, depending on how we define it. And we need to be realistic about how many hours in a day. But if we decide that what we want based on what's important to us and not other people, it's not very difficult to craft that life that meets our needs professionally and meets our needs personally. And these things are fluid. Sometimes we put a little bit more in professional. Sometimes we put a little bit more into personal. And you just keep moving. So thank you so much for joining me. And you can always come to CourtneyAnderson.com for more information.